finished watching a movie called The Chair. These past few days have been freaking hot as hell. So I've been having to sleep in my living room because there's AC down there. And in the midst of uh, trying not to have a heat stroke, I decided to order something on demand since, hey, it's late at night, I don't have internet downstairs, and uh, might as well watch something, right? But everything under the horror category I've seen. So the only thing I haven't seen is this movie called The Chair. And right off the bat, you know, you think, electric chair. Well, no. And judging by this cover art, it looks like a ripoff of Sweeney Todd, doesn't it? The position of the chair, how the window is, you're, all you're missing is just Johnny Depp sitting on it. Anyway, this movie is by Panic Pictures. I think it's trying to tell me what I should be doing the entire time I'm watching this thing. Scary. Panic. Oh god. So the movie opens up with like random images just popping back and forth like you see some trees and a dude's face and an eye and some legs and back and forth all this shit. It reminds me of that three minute video I had to make my freshman year you know just so I can get a grade. Yeah make a three minute video based on a painting. Uh yeah. There you go. That's what it is. Mind you this movie is very student film like and I'm not talking like college student film and I'm talking like high school student film. You know, like, I, I've seen the movies in college because I went to art school. They're not bad. I remember seeing the films in high school and it's definitely YouTube material. You know what I mean? Just pretentious. And everyone just thinks, oh man, if I just copy that thing from that movie or do this like that, people think I'm so cool and they'll, they know I'm referencing like Kubrick or something. It's like, come on, man. Make your own original idea. Anyway, we have our main character, Danielle, and if you see, there's the bottle of pills really close to the camera. One, it's so you can kind of hide her nakedness as she goes in the tub, and two, it's like, ooh, Danielle, she pops pills. And I love how, just the way how it's positioned, you don't see what kind of medication. It's a peen a fiend, a fun, you know, some medication that ends with that sounding, and she's taking 10 milligrams of it. Ooh, what is she taking? But yeah, there are a couple shots of her in the tub, and it shows her face, she kind of just kind of wiggling around, and goes back to like candles and back and forth. It's like real obvious suggestion of masturbation. You're like, alright, come on, man. You're not even like 10 minutes in. And you already got your main character in the tub touching herself. It's like, okay, what the hell? The movie is obviously trying to build suspense by making it quiet, trying to make the house creepy, all this stuff. But what it is, is just through all that silence, you just keep thinking, how is this person in grad school afford to live in this kind of like old Victorian house when they're not even employed? You just keep thinking that over and over and over again. You're not getting scared, you're just being annoyed that, damn it, why can't I have my own place? Jesus. Ugh. Anyway, ten minutes in, a book falls down, and then I guess she gets spooked. So she decides to film herself asleeping. Making her own paranormal activity, it seems. The director is obviously using a wide angle lens. And I have nothing against wide angle lens, but just for this type of movie, I don't think it's really necessary. And if you see like how the doors are, they're they look like they're like bowing from like heat or something. It doesn't add to any suspense. It's not making it scary, it's just stupid. Also, the audio, like, the dialogue, it sounds ADR the whole time. It's like, really? You know, like, it, like it's either maybe they had too good of a microphone that didn't pick up any echo, or they really just re-recorded the audio, because if they would just had echoes of the house or something, it may, might have made it seem scary, but no. I guess they didn't want to go for scary. They wanted to go for boring. Duh, who the hell are you? That's Danielle's sister, Anna. The introduction of her, you really didn't know she was there because the audio was so low at like a whisper. You're like, what? Like, all you hear was like, 
And I was like, oh man, is she like talking to herself or is she on the phone? And all of a sudden you see her go up these stairs and there's someone behind her. You're like, Yo, what the fuck is that? That's her sister. Anyway. And here we have the cliche of the camera following the character walking back and forth between like a hallway or some opening and they, they go back and there's nothing and they go put something back and back oh no there's something in the doorway like the killer standing there or like there's a shadow figure at the end but in our case it's just a hanging chair oh my god a chair could that be the chair hmm because she got spooked by the camera moving on its own in her rape fantasy dream she calls her sister over and that's when they see the black fog from the island of Lost. And she plays it on this TV, which I doubt has any AV plugs. You know, but I guess with movie magic, it makes it possible. <laughs> the, oh my god. The, the director's cat wander on the set and, like, just turn on the camera because it looks like it's just playing around with the camera, and the director's like, oh shit, oh shit, get away from the camera, oh, it's fucking rolling, oh, let's just keep rolling, I'll edit this out later. 30 minute mark, Danielle suddenly knows how to fold a paper crane. Her sister's afraid she's quote unquote paranoid again. Danielle says that it's not like last time, ooh, last time, I wonder what happened last time. And her sister notices that she hasn't been taking her pills. Hmm, pills, paranoia. Both start with a P. Mm. And then we see Danielle writing in her journal. Then suddenly, her neck kind of twitches like she's cracking her neck. And then she switches hands and starts writing. Yeah, um, it's called being ambidextrous, and maybe with her head dipped down the whole time, her neck was being strained. I don't think that's supposed to really signify anything, but, uh, okay. Oh my god. God, does that look like a fake hand? Oh, Jesus. It's like they were holding a stick with a hand attached to it. Oh, Jesus. So then Danielle starts, you know, taking mad random shit from the house that I guess was left behind from the previous owner. Starts making shit with it. And while she's under her possessed thing, she tends to eat a lot of cat food. Mind you, towards the beginning of the movie, you see her cutting up a block of soy cheese. So suggesting that she's like a vegan or a vegetarian. The fact that she has cat food in the house, it's beyond me. Maybe because she saw the director's cat and decided, hey, I'll be a, a good Samaritan and, you know, feed it or something. The Giada pedophile. I think we need to call Chris Hansen on this one. So creepy. She's just like stroking the kid's head. Ugh. So she keeps making shit and it turns out to be the chair. Just looks like a bunch of shit on it. Not a big deal. Just drops by to speak to her. And then all of a sudden the story decides not to mention any more of him. Then the sister comes over for dinner and tells Danielle, Hey, what are you cooking? It smells like some weird meat. And that's when I thought, oh man, did she kill the guy and they're eating him? Really? Oh, Christ, that looks like fun. I always thought putting a pair of scissors on the stove as well. You know, you can always do a lot of fun things that way. Turns out the ex-boyfriend is not dead. Well, as you can see here, he is dead since she just stuck an awl at the side of his head. Uh, he, I guess he came back again for another visit or some shit. Whatever, it doesn't matter, he's dead. So by now... Danielle's sister Anna has noticed that her sister has been acting really, really strange. Going through cans and cans of cat food and, I guess, dabbling with that friggin' chair a lot. She goes into the bathroom and opens a closet in the bathroom. Why do people have closets in the bathroom? Anyway. But as you can see, Danielle's hiding above the shower stall on a shelf. Oh, fuck, whatever. From there, the sister goes upstairs, and she sees her sister's laptop open to a page that th she's been researching the house on. And there's a CD that had audio uh, from the video. I forgot the 
reason why, but anyway. So she puts the CD in, and she plays the video, and somehow she easily has it synced up already. And it's pretty much saying, like, the previous person who lived here killed some dude who killed someone, and blah, 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 and now that dude who... Now the old guy who killed the young guy who ended up killing someone is now in possession of Danielle's body, and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. So then, you know, before... You know, Anna could go, oh crap, let me just like get the fuck out of the house or something. It's another cliche of, oh, just when I find out what's happening, I get hit in the face with a frickin' iron and pass out. You know, like seriously, couldn't the sister have just like grabbed the CD home and gone on that website herself and figured it out and went, oh well, guess she'll be in the house no matter what, I can always just go and get the cops or something, but no, I'm gonna stand there for three minutes and sync up this video and CD and go, hmm, now I see what's up with my sister. I think I'll do some, ah, I'm passed out. So Anna wakes up and she's strapped to the chair. And the chair has like this kind of corset thingy on her and she's all strapped in her head and all that stuff. And every time she breathes out, um, there's like a, a paint bucket filled with change and, you know, it's it's a weight, so it kind of constricts like a snake. So every time she breathes out, it gets tighter and tighter. So as the possessed Danielle is just blabbing on about pretty much exposition and whatever not, then she goes away because, um, the little boy, I think his name is Jacob, ooh, another lost reference, ugh, um, is asking Danielle for help, who, I don't know why he would ask her for help, because earlier she was just stroking his head all creepy-like, but anyway, that obviously gives Anna ample time to escape. So once the, so once Anna's free, she ends up tying up her sister, and going to find the original person that is dead, that, the, the body of the person that's dead, who's possessing the sister, and then something like it's by a gargoyle, by a sanitarium, and whatever not. So the sister arrives at the location, and she climbs over the fence, but it's obvious that she could have just hopped over two feet over that wooden part on your right. Like, what the fuck? No, no, no. She had to climb the fence. Jesus. Somehow it becomes dark in a matter of seconds. Like, what Mike Nelson said in his riff tracks for Night of the Living Dead. The sun then set. It crashed. So Anna tries looking for a sanitarium, but she realizes it's torn down. And oddly enough, the original guy who killed the guy who's possessing the sister shows up in a station wagon to help Anna. And he just so happens to be Danielle's professor. Wow, what a coincidence. And she even says, how the fuck are you alive? Because who wouldn't react like that? Apparently he's been reinventing himself for the past centuries or whatever hell. I guess he's Doctor Who or something. Jeez. Generated guy asked Anna to shoot him when the possessed spirit goes into him because once they dig up the body. Whatever the plan was, how stupid it is, it goes freaking up in flames. Not literally, but it just sucks. So Anna goes, alright, well, this plan bomb. I'm just gonna go back to the house and see how my sister's doing. Of course, when she gets upstairs, she drops a crowbar. Whenever that's gonna come back to bite her in the ass. She sees little Jacob strapped to the chair. He's not freaking out at all. He's just like, oh, well, well, this just sucks. So I have to say for a child, he's fucking calm as hell. If that was me as a child, I'd still be kicking and screaming like a motherfucker. And we see that Danielle's just in her little emo corner, not possessed, and she's apologizing to Anna, and Anna's apologizing to her. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And of course, Danielle says the cliche thing of, it's over, it's over. And of course it's not over when you say it's over, because it's not fucking over. And of course, once they say that, frickin' Jacob here grabs a crowbar and beats both of their asses. Woo! So then the credits roll, and we see Jacob with a pair of scissors on the stove. 
which if you see he turned on the stove but he turned on the stove in the back not the one in the front because you can see the one in the back is starting to glow red yeah great job little kid you don't even, you don't even know how to work a freaking stove so that was a chair what a predictable piece of shit just like Paranormal Activity, this low-budget fucker was filmed at the director's home. All this shows is that directors have nice homes. Yeah, and I doubt the actors do. Again, like Paranormal Activity, it had shitty camera handling. Yes, I know one was technically documentary style and the other wasn't. But it was complete amateur. It was obvious the chick was gonna get possessed. It was obvious that she was gonna snap out of it at the end. And it was obvious that her and her sister would die as well. And not to mention the in-credits look at the little boy doing something devious. God. Ah! Usually when I see shit like this, I say wow a lot while watching it because I'm mostly amazed by the bullshit that I'm being fed. But with this movie, I kept saying oh god, because the moment something would happen, I already known what coming results would be. And why do I sound like I have a fucking lisp? Like a gay lisp? What the fuck? Since when? And why the fuck do I sniffle a lot? God damn it, the movie's ass!